So, why do I hate essential oils? Well, they can just be flat out dangerous and no one really talks about that. Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. Now, first of all, uh, before we delve too deeply into this topic, I want to make clear that I make products with both fragrant oils and essential oils so I'm not trying to sway anyone's opinion uh, in either direction. In fact, even most of my candles uh, contain a slew of different essential oils in them. However, this video may come across as though I'm more on the side of fragrant oils, and that is because there are a lot of people that will go on and on about essential oils, <laughs> and I don't think that they have a full picture of them. So I'm gonna summarize what I like about essential oils and, well, what I don't like, and you can do with that information what you wish. Uh, it's more, the idea is just to provide you with the information. So let's get right into the video. All right, first of all, let's talk about what I like about essential oils. Number one, they are straight from the earth. Essential oils are generally either steam distilled from the leaves of plants, or they can be cold pressed um, from uh, like the rind uh, of, of fruits and different things. Um, and so number one is just that they come straight from the earth. And number two, um, they have holistic benefits. Now, we can't really claim that our candles have um, therapeutic benefits, right? Or that our soaps have medical benefits beyond getting you clean. Um, but we can talk about the properties of the ingredients that are in our products. Um, and if people wanna kind of marry those together, then they are more than welcome to do that. Third, Essential oils can be less expensive than fragrant oils, or more expensive, just kind of depending on the oil. But for example, two pounds of sweet orange essential oil um, from SVA Organics, which is one of my favorite suppliers, um, will run you, I think it's uh, in the mid 30s or 40s or so. Um, I'll put the current price on the screen, but if you were to get the equivalent amount of uh, orange fragrant oil, from you know your average candle supplier, um, two 16 ounce bottles would probably run you easily over $50, if not 60, 70, just kind of depending. Again, there are definitely some essential oils that are more expensive than fragrant oils. It really depends on the oil, um, but you can certainly find a lot of them, including really popular ones like lavender, 4042, or um, sweet basil. There's a lot of great oils that are very affordable and uh, <laughs> it's actually surprising how affordable um, some essential oils can be. And the fourth thing that I really like about essential oils is that they can make an excellent complement to fragrant oils. And we'll talk more about that later. And now on to what I don't like about essential oils. First and foremost, there are a lot of notes that simply don't exist with essential oils. Uh, for example, chocolate. Uh, <laughs> there's no such thing as chocolate essential oil. Or, you know, blueberry, for example. Really popular candle note. Um, it just simply doesn't exist in the essential oil world. And the list can go on and on, but um, in my candle line, there are a lot of notes that I wouldn't be able to have if I only used essential oils in my products. And um, there are notes that, you know, like for example, apple or chocolate or, you know, blueberry, graham cracker, lots of different notes that are super important in my opinion um, that I, I wouldn't want to have a candle line without. Number two, <laughs> generally speaking, essential oils cold process soap performance leaves a lot to be desired. Um, a lot of times if you've experimented with citrus essential oils in your cold process soaps, you'll find that unless you're dealing with like five-fold or ten-fold orange, that you're gonna be left with virtually no fragrance after that cure. Um, and that's because of how alkaline um, soap is during uh, saponification from the sodium hydroxide that is required uh, to make your <laughs> oils into soap. And that will simply um, be very hard on a lot of essential oils. They're just um, gonna fade, a lot of them. Uh, peppermint's another one that I've really struggled with quite a bit. 
Um, and I'll talk more about that later, but um, yeah. Point number two is that their cold process soap performance can leave a lot to be desired, especially if you're working with them uh, by themselves. And point number three is that high amounts of bad ingredients can be present. Because essential oils are coming straight from the earth and they're being either steam distilled directly from plant leaves in general or cold pressed like from fruits and like citruses, um, you're getting 100% of the contents of whatever they are coming from. So there can be, it's a common misconception, but just because they are natural does not mean that they are safe. They can have high amounts of ingredients, for example, that are on Proposition 65 or um, they can have um, ingredients with mutagen type properties or actual carcinogenic properties. Um, so, and then there's organ toxins and reproductive toxins, and uh, those can most certainly be present in essential oils, and sometimes at very high amounts, depending on, you know, the type of oil that you're using can really depend on a lot of factors, but um, that is a, I think one of the most common misconceptions is, oh, you know, I'm getting a product that's just all essential oils or mostly all essential oils. That means it's going to be really safe, really natural, really great for me. And it can mean quite the antithesis of that, which I think would come as a shock to most people. And point number three is that it can be very hard to find IFRA certificates for essential oils. Um, even SVA Organics, the supplier that I tend to purchase the most from, you have to specifically ask them um, for an IFRA certificate and it can be like pulling teeth to get um, those IFRA certificates. And you really need those when you're using um, essential oils in products, just like you would for a fragrant oil. Um, it's really not advisable to just take you know, say you're using Lavender 4042 and to just take, you know, one supplier's Lavender 4042 without knowing what um, your supplier's Lavender um, IFRA certificate would be because it could vary quite greatly depending on where um, the material is coming from and even um, I would say from, from year to year with the different uh, crops that they're using. And point number five is that they um, can be very bad for pregnant humans. That's um, another point that a lot of folks don't mention when they're selling products, you know, that have essential oils in them. Um, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, it's you really need to talk with your doctor before you use products that contain essential oils. Um, there are some like clary sage, for example, that can actually uh, kind of induce um, contractions and or labor and <laughs> that is not usually desirable. Um, and then there are other ones that can cause hormonal imbalances. Um, so the list kind of goes on and on there, but um, point number five is that they are not advisable um, for pregnant humans. And point number six is that essential oils, some of them are highly phototoxic. Uh, citruses, for example, lemon, bergamot, um, these, uh, photo meaning light, toxic meaning toxicity, um, these, if you are out in the sunlight, can actually cause blistering and even uh, rashes, skin rashes and burns um, because of their phototoxic properties. So certain essential oils, in my opinion, shouldn't be used in leave-on skincare products at all, even if they're allowed, um, allowable um, in terms of their IFRA amounts. And essential oils can also be more corrosive than fragrance oils. Uh, I've definitely had essential oils where I get a little bit spilled on my floor and it just takes the varnish right off that top layer of my floor. Um, and fragrant oils can do this as well, but there are definitely lots of fragrances out there that are um, just by and large much less corrosive than essential oils. So it just makes cleanup overall a little bit easier if you were to happen to spill something. Um, and, and some essential oils, like lavender, um, for example, can be used neat. It can be applied to the skin without a carrier oil, for example. Um, and so that one definitely is not going to exhibit those corrosive properties, but depending on the oil that you're using, um, I would say by and large that essential oils um, I would consider much more corrosive than your average fragrant oils. And the last reason that I don't like essential oils is for sustainability reasons. So take rose essential oil. Uh, one drop of rose essential oil is equivalent to more than 50 roses. Now think about that for a second. If you were to use 10% of rose essential oil in a candle, 
So I'm gonna make a 10 ounce candle with a 10% fragrance load of rose essential oil. And if you do your math, that means that that one 10 ounce candle will contain approximately 30,000 roses. And it probably won't have much of a scent throw. Now, a full disclaimer, I have actually tried this. I've made <laughs> candles with rose essential oil and one candle, I believe I was making an eight ounce candle at the time. Um, it cost me more than $50 to make and unfortunately the candle itself wouldn't even stay lit. Burn performance is a whole nother factor that um, I won't even get too far into, but uh, just overall essential oils can be very, very challenging uh, for wicking and for candle burn performance as well as longevity. So what are you supposed to take away from this? Well, maybe it's not either or. In fact, I would argue that fragrant oils and essential oils actually work really well together. I'd argue that they work better together than either could do alone. So I think that fragrance oils and essential oils exhibit a synergistic relationship. You may or may not know this, but most high quality fragrance oils contain essential oils in them. Oftentimes, lots of them. And as I've mentioned in a few other videos, there are suppliers like Candle Science and Makesy and Northwood that will even list the essential oils that are in their fragrances. And some suppliers like 1617 do that as well. Um, you have to just open their SDS, their safety data sheet document, and you will be able to see exactly um, what those essential oils are that are in that fragrance. And your favorite luxury perfumes uh, more than likely contain some Australian sandalwood as a fixative in them. And who knows, Mrs. Myers may even sneak a little bit of lemon essential oil into her um, most popular cleaner. So what I like to do is use both in my products, both fragrant oils and essential oils, often in mixes with each other. For my Noir uh, cold process soap, for example, I will typically blend 50% around thereabouts of Japanese uh, peppermint essential oil with 50% of Candle Science's peppermint eucalyptus uh, fragrant oil. And that gives me a nice balance with the longevity that I want, um, which is coming from that fragrant oil. So as some of my essential oils dying off, I've got that fragrant oil to kind of back it. And then I'll also use um, kind of some fixatives in there as well, some natural ones like uh, benzoin, which is a resin, um, as well as sometimes I find that clays can help those essential oils. Um, to stick better in your cold process soaps. And for my body butters, I do use mainly essential oils. About seven eighths of the aromatic content in my body butters comes directly from essential oils, and about one eighth comes from fragrant oils, which just kind of give it that artistic twist that I want, that kind of inspired take on the essential oil. And it still leaves them with an aromatic profile that is incredibly earthy and natural. Now for my candles, I tend to use fragrant oils that contain a lot of essential oils in them. And as I mentioned earlier, Candle Science, Makesy, and Northwood, just to name a few, um, will actually list what those essential oils are on the fragrance um, profiles on their website. And then there's those other companies like 1617 that will have those available in their safety data sheets um, so that you're able to see them that way as well um, for your own knowledge as well as for your product branding. So that's kind of a brief summary of what I do, uh, but the choice is really yours and I would encourage you to um, kind of have a, a be open to a more gray approach with um, how you brand your products and how you formulate them um, because I really really do think that fragrant oils and essential oils have a synergistic relationship that when they are together <laughs> they work more powerfully and more effectively and artistically than either one of them could do alone. The intention of this video was simply to provide you with a little bit of information on a topic that I don't feel like um, gets a lot of attention. Uh, so anyways, that is going to be all for today. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And leave me a comment down below of some of your thoughts on this subject. And I'd be really curious to, to dialogue with some of you and uh, to hear what your thoughts are and how you implement them in your uh, company and your branding. Um, but anyways, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light. And I'm wishing all of you happy candle making. Thank you.